everybody this next topic has to do with uh, how Delta G relates to equilibrium now there's a whole huge section on how Delta G relates to equilibrium and how it relates to um, how it relates to kinetics but we're not going to delve too deeply into it um, but I think that the the first thing that I want you to know and I kind of passed over it was this that when you when you set delta g equal to zero that tells you at what temperature the reaction is going to be spontaneous okay so and that is for when delta h is positive and delta s is positive or when delta h is negative and delta s is negative okay when the signs are the same it de depends on your temperature as to whether the reaction is going to be spontaneous or not and so all we have to do is self set delta g equal to zero and then solve for temperature and that's going to tell us at what temperature the reaction is will become just barely spontaneous okay and so um, so that's one use of how to use um, the idea of equilibrium with um, with delta G the second and maybe more um, mathematical thing that we would want to do is to actually go from delta G to the equilibrium constant K and so that's kind of a an interesting uh, setup is that there's actually a relationship between delta G and the equilibrium constant capital K and that is by finding the natural log of K and then multiplying by negative R times T. T is temperature that's always been temp okay R is the universal gas constant and it's the universal gas constant with units of um, units of energy so it's 8.31 this number will always be given to you uh, where what could we do with this well we could if we really wanted to we could do an equilibrium problem and then once we have the equilibrium problem we can go to delta G and see if it is um, <laughs> see if it is uh, spontaneous or not so there's all sorts of things that we can do we're not going to do that but well just know that we could if we wanted to okay so let's go and let's look at a sample problem okay so it says determine the free energy change um, for this value or for this thing um, and so this is good so in order to determine the free energy okay you need to go delta you need oh I right, go back okay <laughs> okay we need to find the delta H the delta s and the T okay well the delta H for nitrogen is zero and the delta H for hydrogen is zero and then we can go to our thing and look up the delta H of ammonia let me see if I can find it here on and I just went to the website and I looked up um, uh, thermodynamic data so and they usually when they give you thermodynamic data they usually do it by um, by main element so I'm looking up nitrogen because ammonia is nitrogen so the Delta H of ammonia is negative 4611 kilojoules okay so this is the Delta H is negative okay. negative 46.11 kilojoules okay so now to find the Delta H we do products minus the reactants delta H of that reaction is equal to the delta H of formation of the products minus the delta H of formation of the reactants 
Okay. You can abbreviate that however you want, but okay, the products here is so it's going to be one because that's the coefficient times uh, let's see here times negative forty six point one one minus okay the the reactants and so just for completeness, I'll show you because this is zero. Delta H of that is zero. Delta H of that is zero. So that's one half times zero plus one and a half times zero. And so the delta H here equals negative 46.11. I don't even need to break out my calculator. Okay. And that's in kilojoules. Okay. We may have to now. In order to do this, go to, in order to find the delta S, okay, in order to find the delta S, we may actually have to go um, do this on a separate sheet of paper or separate. So let me open up my workbook here, okay, and so we can go delta H of the reaction equals negative 46.11. Okay, now we want to calculate the delta S of the reaction, and so we need to find the delta S of nitrogen. Let's see, delta S of nitrogen is right here. Okay, so here's nitrogen, so it's 90, uh, 191.5. Okay, so the S, the S naught of nitrogen, so this is nitrogen, N2 is equal to 191.5, and so the S0 of, hyd uh, of ammonia, let me get that while I'm here, 192.3, so that's NH3 is 192.3, and now we're going to go to uh, hydrogen. So, hydrogen gas, H2, let's see, H gas, H2 gas, so 130.6. So, the H, H2 gas is 130.6. Okay, and so now we're ready to do this. So, just keep in mind that the reaction was one half N2 gas plus one and a half H2 gas reacts to form uh, NH3. Okay, so that was good. Okay, so now we want products. And so the delta S of the reaction is going to equal the summation of the delta S of the products minus the summation of the delta S of the reactants. Okay, so what do we do? So delta S of the products is just NH3. So, okay, so the delta S of the reaction, and these are standard entropies. Okay, so this is going to be, let's see here, NH3. So this is, there's one of those, put it in square brackets, times 192.3. Minus the pr the prod the reactant. So this is the products. Okay, I got killed my in my sophomore chemistry class because I did not keep track of all of these things. It was uh, frustrating. <laughs> so I always keep track of them now because I've just learned my lesson. And so now let's see here. So times one half times one ninety one point five plus, that's what the summation is, plus one and a half times H2, which is 130.6. Now, we would guess that because we have two moles of gas here and only one mole of gas on this side, that it's going to be a negative delta H, or negative delta S, okay? It's becoming less random because you're going from two to one, okay? So let's see what we get here. So one times 
uh, oops, sorry, 1 times 192.3. Okay, so this is 192.3 minus, and all of this here, so 1 half times 191.5. Okay, and this is 95.75 plus okay, 1.5 times 130.6, okay, 195.9. Okay, so now that's all this. So now we're going to add those together. So now we get 192.3 minus, let's see, 95.75. So minus 291.65, and so our delta S equals 192.3 minus that guy, and lo and behold, it's negative, negative 99.35. Realize that's in joules, and this is in kilojoules. Okay, so we've gotten that. So now we can calculate the delta G. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Okay, so let's see if we can make a little prediction before we do this. So this is exothermic, so that's favored, but this is this reaction is becoming less random, so it's not favored. So the signs are the same, so we don't know exactly what's going to happen. Okay, so we can, so we should calculate the delta G for this. Let's see, uh, the delta G equals delta H, which is negative 46, let me make sure, 46.11 minus temperature, and I just happened to forget the temperature, the temperature is 298, okay, so we go to 298 times the delta S, now remember, this is in joules, we want to convert, anytime we do use this formula, we want to convert it to kilojoules, so we're going to move the decimal over, so this is going to be negative 0 0.09935, okay, and so now the delta G here is, okay, so let's do this, 298 times negative 0 0.09935, okay, this is, so this, this half of the equation is negative 29.6063, and this this just stays the same, so this is negative 46.11 minus that, so negative 46.11 minus a negative 29.6063, and then when we get that, we get our delta G equals negative 16 point, let's just say that. And so now that we've calculated the delta G, we can go ahead and calculate the equilibrium constant. The equilibrium constant is related to delta G using the formula delta G equals negative RT ln K. Now notice here, this is negative, so this is spontaneous. Okay, so let's do this. So now, here's the other thing that we have to realize that R is in 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin, and this is in kilojoules. So now we have to make sure that our units work even better together. So this has to be back in joules, 1, 2, 3. So this is negative 16,500 joules equals negative 8.31, that's a constant that I would have to give you, times R, or times T, which is the same temperature, 298, to the ln of K, okay, capital K, okay, so we're going to take negative 16,500 
And we're going to divide that by negative 8.31. Okay, and then we're going to divide that by 298. And so we get that 6.66 .66 equals the ln of k. Okay. So now to get rid of the ln, we're going to do e to the, and then that's e. So that's the inverse, that's lowercase e, the inverse of, um, of natural log. So that's going to be e to the 6.66. Okay, and I'm rounding, and that's okay. And so now my answer is, let's see, so my answer is 780. Okay, so that's 780. K equals 780. Okay, now is that based on equilibrium? Is that products or reactants favored? Remember, equilibrium is products over reactants. So if this is a big number greater than 1, that means that we have a whole lot of products compared to reactants. So is that consistent with what we have here? Yeah, what we're saying is that this is spontaneous, so we're going to make products. Here, same thing. We're going to make products. Now, even though the question doesn't say it, I'm going to do a third thing, and I'm going to... I'm going to find out at what temperature does this reaction become spontaneous. We want to know at what temperature is this thing going to actually do stuff. So we want to go delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And so we want to solve it for temperature. That's what we don't know. So this is a question again. I'm trying to, I'm going to add to the question. What temperature do we need to perform this reaction at? to make it spontaneous. Okay, what is the minimum temperature? So to do that, we're going to set delta G equal to zero, and our delta H isn't going to change. It's still going to be negative, whatever it was up here, 46.11 minus T. Now we're going to solve for T, and our delta S is still negative, negative point, zero nine nine uh, nine nine three five okay so now we want to solve for t so okay i screw this up more times than not but keep in mind here we're adding and subtracting here so in order to get this on this side okay we're going to have to add 46 so this becomes 46.11 equals negative t times negative 0.09935 now to get this on this side we're going to divide so 46.11 divided by negative 0.09935 Okay, so this is negative 46.12 equals negative t. Okay, we haven't changed the sign of this thing. And so that means that temperature, in this case, is the temperature is equal to negative 4, 6, or is equal to 464.12. Kelvin. Okay, so that means that any temperature, now let me, let's make sure we have this right, any temperature 464 and lower is going to make that spontaneous. If this is above 464, it is going to be non-spontaneous, okay, because of the nature of the equation. Okay, so that we go through all the um, all the cases there for spontaneity and how delta G is related to the equilibrium constant. So I hope this helps and have a great day.